Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the BSc Information Technology Information Session. Today's information session is going to give you all the details about the BSc program and more. And what is most enticing is that we have a special offer where you can save up to $1,000 on tuition per level, right, for the program. And you're going to learn more about that in today's session. You now, starting a BSc is an important decision you guys are making. For many of you, you've been you've been looking at different schools, you've done your research. For others, you've just heard about the program, so you're just trying to get some more information before you make a decision. And for many of you, you've done the research, you just need to basically find out more, et cetera. And today's session is intended to do just that because how important this decision is, it's important that you have all the required information you need in order to make the right choice. So welcome to today's information session. My name is Ravi Raghunath. I'm the executive director of CTS College. I also lecture in the program as well. So I'm looking forward to meeting you guys right, in the program. This is my cell number. This is my email address. Please keep it safe. You could reach me at any time you like, okay? So I don't have cutoff times. You could call me or message me, WhatsApp me as you prefer, right? Um, and if you don't get an, an immediate response, feel free to call on WhatsApp as well. It's not a problem at all, okay? All right. So what will today's session cover? So what we're going to look at is why study? Why study a BSc in information technology? Why study with the University of Bedfordshire? I mean, you do have other options available as well. Why study at CTS College? What are the features of the program, right? What will, what will be covered? What will I learn? How can I fit this into my busy lifestyle? What kind of support will CTS provide? Where will I graduate? Do I have to pay to go to England? Would I graduate in Trinidad? What are my options? Am I eligible to study? What are the entry requirements? How much is this thing going to cost me? And when can I start? So all of those will be covered in today's session. In terms of why study the BSc, we have asked many students in the past, look, why it is you want to study? Now, in terms of studying, right? You so look, we're looking generally at why are you studying and also why the BSc as well. And these are some of the more popular answers that have been given to us. Like some students say, look, I want a promotion. And because of that, I need to get my degree to get that promotion. Some of you may be doing it because you want a change in career. You're currently working in one area and you're looking at switching careers. Some of you may do it because, look, I really want a an increase in salary. The current salary I have I was good until now, or it has never been good enough. And now I need to get something more. So I need to upskill myself to get me that better opportunity as well. Some of you may do this because you want to start or grow your own business. You already have a business you want to grow or you want to start your own business. So this is simply an opportunity to do the same. For some, it's a personal achievement. I simply want my degree, right? And for many, it's at the practical experience you're getting in IT as well as to enhance your employability, right? So those are the more popular reasons. Now, often when we talk to students, the focus has always been on course. And I totally can get that because the fact is, is that you have to pay money to do any program. If you're going to study, it's not there. There, there are some free short courses, but the truth is, is that a bachelor's degree is usually a, a bit of a course, right? So for many people, they focus on the course aspect. And what I want to do is the cost is important because you have to try to fit this into, into your budget. But at the same time, I want you to also recognize that your studying, choosing to study a BSc in IT is not just about the course, it's about an investment in yourself. And I want to show you how that investment can pay off. So I want to give you a different perspective rather than just focusing on the course. I want to show you now the investment side of it, that you're investing in yourself and how. Now we're going to look at a salary chart for the OJT and OJT employee, right? An OJT employee with CXC will get $3,025 a month as with CXC. An OJT with K will get 4,256, or if you have a diploma, et cetera. If you have an associate degree, you'll get $5,445. And if you have a bachelor's degree, you'll get $7,562.50, et cetera. Now, just using this mathematics here, let's suppose that this degree, the intention is to move you from maybe a CXC qualification to a bachelor's degree. Let's look at the difference in pricing that you're going to get, right? So the in terms of the difference in payment. Now with CXC, you're getting 3,025 a month. With a bachelor's degree, you're getting 7,562. On average, so let's answer this question, all right? So pay, uh, pay attention to the two values, CXC and the bachelor's degree. So that's 3,000 versus 7,500 roughly, right? So based on that, 
how much more would you earn with a bachelor's degree versus CXC per month, assuming you're working as an OJT? Would you be able to tell me roughly how much? A, a ballpark figure, I don't need an exact number to the nearest dollar or anything, right? Anyone? Come on, guys. I hope this is not how it's going to be when we're teaching you guys. Right? <laughs> about about extra forty-five hundred dollars. About forty-five, yeah. etc. Good, no problem, right? Okay, mathematics and computing go hand in hand. So if we have some challenges in maths, we might have some challenges in programming and IT, right? <laughs> okay, so roughly around forty-five hundred dollars or so. That's just in one month. Now that is how much more. Eh? That is how much more you will earn uh, with a bachelor's degree. In that's in one month. In one year, how much does that equate to roughly? Just a, a rough ballpark. If it's 45 a month, even treat it as 4,000 a month, multiply by 12 months for one year, how much more would you have earned, right? In one year, roughly, that would be how much, guys? What you about, about, 50, about 54 grand if you're using 4,500. Yes, it's about $5,400 as well. Very good there. Yeah. It's about Is 54. It? You know, more thousand, fifty-four thousand dollars more, fifty-four thousand dollars more. Correct. You know, now you imagine that's how much more you're earning, right? Now that's just one year. Now the truth is, you're not going to work one year and retire, right? So roughly speaking, if we work forty to forty-five years, right, which is normally the life the lifetime for working, right, forty to forty-five years. Let's use forty years, the lower value. Could you tell me how much more that might work out to? How much more you would have? Been? Okay. About two point one million. Exactly, over $2.1 million as well. So based on that, right, you know, when you look at that, it is, it is quite a lot. And basically what this is saying here is that, look, the bachelor's degree, by doing it, if you continue to work for the rest of your life as an OJT and assuming salary does not change, then you would have earned over $2 million more. Imagine what you could do with $2 million more. A house, a car, imagine not just you, but your family, your kids, your grandkids is basically your entire next set of generations are going to be blessed because of what you have done, right? But realistically speaking, though, here's what happened. Our salaries, what we found, though, is that a salary with a bachelor's degree increases at a much faster rate than a salary with an OJT. Studies have also shown that because of that, this value of 2,178 is a small figure. Actual estimates suggest that assuming that you get you, you get job elsewhere, et cetera, and you move beyond OJT, right? That that figure could go as much as 6 million, et cetera. Some pundits have estimated as well. So you're earning a whole lot more with, an, with your bachelor's degree. So when you look at that, you might be focusing on the cost of the degree and you're losing out on this in bigger, the bigger part of it in terms of the investment and how much it can pay off as well. So I wanted to encourage you as well to sometimes see that as opposed to see just, hey, this has cost me this much. I'm not going to bother with that at all. And you're stuck in, in the same job with the same salary, et cetera, right? And you're not giving yourself the opportunity to grow, to expand, or to get the you know, potential jobs that you want to, okay? All right. Now, why study with the University of Bedfordshire? The truth is, is that Bedfordshire is not the most popular city in the UK, right? And what are the more popular cities? The more popular cities, apart from London, etc., are the cities where there's a football club in the English Premier League, right? Hartford and, <laughs> and, um, what do you call the next one? Hartford and... Well, we have Hartfordshire, we have Bedfordshire as well. But, you know, if I were to ask you cities in London, you might tell me Manchester, Chelsea, Liverpool, you know, like places like those, right? Most of those are based on football clubs other than the popular cities like London, right? The city like London. But Bedfordshire, in terms, they don't have a football team in the, in the Premier League, so therefore nobody knows them as well. But you may have heard of Luton, and Luton is where they have their main campus, right? So why study with them? The, well, the University of Bedfordshire is a modern, innovative university, right? They, they have a heritage that dates back to more than 100 years. Like, um, if you follow the story of UTT, right? UTT was first um, a polytechnic institute like John D and etc. that eventually became UTT, right? So in the UK as well, the University of Bedfordshire was like that. They started as a polytechnic institute that eventually grew to become a university, right? Currently, they have more than 20,000 students from over 120 different countries. There are five campuses in the UK, London, Bedford, Potteridge, Alsberg, and Milton Keynes. Right, but what they've been doing is that they've been exploring and taking advantage of the online learning, and they have also 
partnered with institutions in China, in Middle East, in Europe, Southeast Asia, and in Trinidad and Tobago and Guyana, and also up the islands as well that they're working on as well, which is St. Lucia, I think, right? So they're partnering in different locations as well. And therefore they're increasing their, their, their student base as well. They're in the, they, they're highly ranked university, ranked in the top 6% of universities in the world. And they won the Queen's University or anniversary anniversary prize in 2013, which was a huge recognition in the UK as well. So that was a real wonderful thing for the university. In terms of rank, they are ranked in several different areas as well. But as I indicated to students here, um, you know, sometimes when you look for a program, don't just focus on ranking, whichever program you might be looking at, you choose a program that is most beneficial for you. So there is no real best program because at the end you have to choose what is best for you as opposed to best overall because your situation may be different. So for example, if it is you're looking for a program that is the lowest price, then you may want to consider a gate funded program. If you want to do a program in the shortest possible time, then you may want to consider a program based on its duration. If you, if it is you want, you don't have much time for classes, but you need to get your degree, then you may want to focus on the, the timetable and that sort of thing. If it is your student who need a lot of support, you need a lot of help, coaching, guidance, etc., then you need to look at the kind of support that you're going to get, right? So there are so many different things that you need to factor in, in choosing a program that is best suited for you. So I would encourage you as well, look, there are many programs in Canada, they're all wonderful, right? So I am not going to, to encourage anyone to bash any of the programs. The truth is there's value to all of them, but you choose one that best suits your personal needs, right? So that's just one encouragement there. Good? All right. So based on that now, right, what about CTS College, right? Many of you, based on what you said, you've heard of CTS, you've been following some of this stuff as well, right? But we're always looking at getting and meeting new customers also. So based on this, just a little bit about CTS College. Our vision really is to, our mission is to provide high quality and relevant educational opportunities while promoting excellence in staff and students. We are private tertiary institution, we are a private um, education provider, and we offer a range of courses. We have over 20 years in the education industry. We are an ACTT recognized institution. Our programs range from preschool. In fact, we're just starting um, in April, we'll be starting a preschool. We have a private primary, we have a private secondary. We do tertiary bachelors from certificate diploma to bachelors and master's program as well. And eventually our intent is to offer a doctorate. So almost as though it's a cradle to degree form of education, right? And we offer a range of um, short courses, which are practical personal development programs as well to complement your academic studies as well. Now, this slide is what we call our bragging slides because CTS College, um, and I'm, I'm humble in terms of sharing the good news with you guys as well, but really this is about our hard work and the effort that goes behind the scene. Student support is one of the, 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 the most important thing for us at, at CTS College. For many of you, I don't know if any one of your friends who have been here told you about the student support at CTS College as well, but to me, that's our biggest bragging right. And because of that support, we've got all of these here. We've won over 96 AB World Prizes, right? A World Prize is given to the student with the highest mark in the world in the program. Now the AB program is offered in over 30 something countries, in over 200 different schools as well. And we've won 96 World Prizes there. That's an amazing accomplishment. Our students have topped the, topped the world in 96 different times. So that's a big accomplishment for us. Right now we have the record for the most number of World Prize won in a given exam sitting. The previous record I think AB indicated was seven or eight. We shattered the record. We had 13 students in one intake. And that was a big, a big thing for CTS College and for Trinidad as well, because to, to have Trinidad, a school in Trinidad, you know, beating all schools in the UK and all different countries as well. We had schools in Africa, schools in Europe, schools in other Caribbean countries as well. So this was really a huge accomplishment as well, right? We also won over 47 university awards with the University of Hertfordshire for top students. So our students are competing with students in the UK, students in different countries, students who are all also online and winning the top prizes as well. And apart from that, we've won two with ABMA and we've won 11 ACTT awards. 
just to share with you, ACTT held something called the Quiet Awards, but, it, but the Quiet Awards were stopped in 2017 because of budgetary constraints as well. But the, since it, well, while it was in, a, in action, CTS College won 11 ACTT Quiet Awards. We won six Quiet Awards for student support services, more than any other school in the country. We won three first and established man, um, quality management system, as well as two in excellence and teaching and learning. We have won more Quiet Awards overall than any other school in the country. And that's a, a humbling, you know, um, experience for us because you imagine we are competing with the likes of the giants like UE, UTT, USC, et cetera. So to win an award competing against these groups is really a big achievement for us because they have usually have a lot more budget to invest into different areas. But yet as a, a smaller school, you know, we've been able to outshine them in many of these areas is really a remarkable accomplishment for us and for ACT to recognize that and award us as well for it is really something really good. And I'm thanking God for all that he's done for CTS as well, because truly without him, CTS will never be where it is as well. Now, in terms of our experience with delivering the BSc IT, CTS College has over 14 years of experience delivering BSc programs and particular BSc in information technology. Our pass rate is over 85%. There are over, we've had over 2,000 students enrolling in our BSc IT programs, right? We've had over 1,700 students graduating with over almost 500 graduating with first class honors and our graduates are employed in the various sectors as well in different industries. Now, having said that, we previously, the previous IT program we offered was with University of Hertfordshire. And in 2020, February, we switched over to University of Bedfordshire. Now, just a note, there was no bad blood or anything, please. The only reason that we switched universities as well was simply because we wanted to offer, initially we were offering just the finally of the BSc IT with Hertfordshire. We wanted to offer all three years with the university. Unfortunately, the pricing that they were offering was way too high and it was not suitable for the Trinidad market. It would have made us the priciest program in Trinidad, which was not something we want to have. We don't want that recognition, right? So we agreed with the university that like, it didn't make sense because we've tried several times in terms of our discussion, but we weren't getting to a point where a price point that we felt would have been satisfactory in Trinidad. And we started um, headhunting, if you want to call it that. We looked at various programs that give us the opportunity now to look for different things. Now, over the years, we've been talking to students about what they wanted in the program. And what we were finding out from students is that some students focus, their focus was that they wanted to complete their degree in the shortest possible time. So they wanted an accelerated program. Some students wanted the lowest price. Some students talked about, look, I want a program that I could access anywhere because I have to travel for my job, et cetera, right? Some students say, look, I'm really busy. I need to get my degree, but I could only, I could only attend classes one day for the week. I, I don't have time to do lots of classes, et cetera. So there were different things people wanted. And we tried to look, we looked for different programs that would marry all of those different things our student want. And after reviewing several different options, we decided to go with the University of Bedfordshire. And I'll share with you some of the reasons, right? So those reasons are even outlined here. One is because they were looking for a fully accredited program that was globally accessible, that was practical. In fact, the employers wanted practical because the employers wanted persons with skills that when they finish, they can actually come to the workplace and perform, right? Of course, naturally as well, the employer will provide training, et cetera, as well. But at the same time, you're not going there just with a degree with a knowledge, set of theoretical knowledge, but no hands-on skills, right? The, it's accelerated and it's also affordable. So we look at these five, what we call the five E's, right? With you in the following slides. So in terms of the program, we said it's fully accredited. The program is quality, quality assured by QA in the UK. The QA is the body that determines or they advise the government as well about which institution should be conferred with the, um, the power to grant degrees. Uh, an institution just cannot create itself and say, I'm a university you have to go through a process and that process needs to be approved by QA. So QA does all the quality assurance as well. And the, the university regularly goes through quality assurance with UK every five years or so. So they are quality assured by QA, which is really important for you guys as well, because you need to know that look, your program is quality assured there. And once it is quality assured by QA, because they are considered as one of the, the best bodies in the world for quality assurance, you can feel more confident that this program now is accepted everywhere, anywhere else, right? Apart from that, it is recognized by ACTT in Trinidad. So the program is ACTT recognized as well. Next, in terms of, so a bit more in terms of the, the um, 
the accreditation as well, right? So in terms of accreditation, part of the program is that all, as much as CTS delivers the program, we have to go through a process called transnational quality. What does that mean? Well, it means that all our marketing and promotion must be approved by the university. It means that our admissions must be approved by the university. Our faculty, our lecturers must be approved by the university. So we just can't randomly choose anyone to lecture the program, right? All our teaching materials, all the assessments are set by the university as well. They also conduct annual audits and they do feedback as well to ensure that you know, we are doing what we're supposed to do. So it is not simply, well, they approve us and we do our own thing. They are, there are processes we must follow. In terms of global accessibility of the program, well, apart from this program being available in so many different countries, so you could go to another country and do the same program. The good news is that it's also fully online and therefore you'll have a, students will have access to an online learning environment called Brio. That's the Bedfordshire um, online environment where you'll be given a username and password. And you, on that environment, you could get all your university lecture notes, you submit your assignment, you review your results and all of those. You also have access to academic journals and stuff like that. So all of that is available via Brio, as well as you have access to student information that's 24 seven as well. So those are some of the advantages of being an online student as well, right? In a program that is fully online, so you can access it anywhere in the world, okay? So because of the movement to online, in fact, we've had students in Germany, in UK, in America, in Canada, as well, enrolling in the programs because the programs, are, the pricing that we offer these programs for are way cheaper than they would pay for the same programs in their countries. So that's a big advantage to them as well. Another thing is that this program is extremely practical. So what we've done, the university deliberately made a program where it was solving real life challenges as well. So in each of the different units, you have to solve problems and those problem solving skills really is what will help you to, to take your skills back into the workplace because you're solving various IT problems as well. The program is accelerated because you could complete this program in, in, under, in two years. If you're starting at the bridging level, right, you, you complete it in two years and four months. And there is even the option to complete in just eight months, because if you start directly in level six, you could complete this program in as little as eight months. Now, here's how it works, right? So the program has different levels. There's the bridging level, there's level four, level five, level six. Level four is what we call year one, level five is year two, and level six is year three, right? Now, each level, other than the bridging level. So the bridging level has one unit only or one subject running for four months. But the other units, the other levels, level four, five, and six, they each has four subjects. You are doing two subjects at a time. So you're doing two subjects over four months, and then you do two subjects over another four months. That four month period is called a semester. So in two semesters, you can finish a level. Two semesters is eight months. So in eight months, you finish level four, eight months, you finish level five, eight months, you finish level six. That's 24 months you complete your degree, okay? So you could complete your degree in as little as two years, starting from level four. The program is what we call an affordable investment, right? We'll, and we'll talk about that, that more in detail as well shortly. We have payment plans available, so you can actually pay up front or you can pay monthly. Apart from that, too, we also work with GMMB, uh, which is a banking institution or financial institution, so that our students can get loans as well. So you can qualify for a loan at JMMB. Now, how is this program structured? So in terms of the structure, I indicated the different levels. You have level four, which is year one made up of four units. Then after completing level four, you go to level five and then level six. So you do two units in one semester, two units in next semester, eight months, finish level four. Similarly, two units by two units in level five, finish in eight months, etc. Now, let's talk about the entry requirements. To enroll in level four, right? You, this is ideal if you're a holder of CAPE A levels, or if you don't have CAPE, it's not a big issue. If you have IT work experience, two or more years IT work experience, fine, it doesn't matter what your qualification, you can start level four. Or if you have just general work experience, whether it's IT or non IT, just if you have three or more years of just general work experience, so you work you worked in a store, clothing store, or whatever it might be, so it's not IT related, it doesn't matter. You could start at level four with work experience, right? Now, to move to level five, you could either pass level four to move to level five, or you could start directly in level five as well. So how can you get directly into level five? Well, ideally, if you have done an equivalent of a level four qualification elsewhere in IT, 
it must be IT related, or you have two or more years IT work experience and you also have IT certifications, then you'll be considered for level five. For level six, you could complete level five and move to level six, or you could enroll directly in level six. To enroll directly in level six, you need to have an associate degree or higher diploma or level five IT diploma, right? Or any one of those. And you can use that to enroll directly into level six. If once you have a level five IT qualification or HND or diploma from UTT or associate degree or any of those, right? You can start directly into the final level which runs for just eight months, okay? So now what is the bridging program about then? So the bridging program was really created for persons who don't really meet the criteria to start at level four or five, six, et cetera. Now, who would those be? So ideally the only persons who will be starting the bridging program are persons who, right, have just finished CSEC. So even if you don't have your CSEC passes, right, because we do have quite a few students who haven't even written CSEC and started the bridging program. The bridging program runs for simply four years. So I would only encourage this if you're straight out of CXE, the CSEC program, you didn't do your levels and you just did CSEC, then you may want to consider the bridging program as your, your natural starting point, right? But once you have any work experience, it doesn't matter whether it's IT or non-IT or amateur, you can start at level four ideally. But the university makes the final decision, okay? So we can advise you, but the university makes the final decision. Now, what am I going to learn in this program? What will be covered? So just to introduce you now. So in terms of level four, level four is more introductory. So you're going to learn about software you're also going to learn about hardware how computers are built how they work etc you'll work with databases you'll also have access to cisco academy where you'll be doing a networking course so you'll learn networking and you can get a network a, a, a certification from cisco as well if you succeed in the exam right apart from that you will also learn about you learn java programming you learn python programming as well you'll work with microsoft access also so these are some of the different tools and skills you'll be learning in year one year two now will focus on your, your software design and development so you'll learn additional programming in php right so you learn php and you learn some um, css as well apart from that you'll also learn more about design designing interface etc and the user experience part of it. And in year three, you would also learn P, um, develop application with PHP for your final project, right? But apart from that, uh, you'll use PHP, you'll use some CSS, HTML, et cetera, to build your web application. But also you will learn about project management, right? And also you'll have to develop your final year project as well. So those are some of the areas you'll be covering in the program. So these are the names of the modules. Now, one thing to note um, that are found with university, Although they are just four units, what they've done, like I'm currently teaching in a subject called fundamentals of, sorry, yeah, fundamentals of computer studies. And that subject is made up of two parts. One part is hardware, one part is software, right? So for the hardware part, you'd learn about, you know, like in terms of the logic gates and stuff like that. But in the software side of it now, right? It covers a whole different area. So it's almost like two subjects in one. Another example is computer system structure. That course, one half of it is made up of databases and the other half of it is made up of networking. So the subjects often consist of more than one subject areas. And for this reason, what they've done is they've merged multiple subject areas into each subject. So it's almost like doing eight subjects ideally when you're in year one, right? And, um, and in each year because the subject content is very broad and diverse as well, okay? So, you, so you're not restricted to doing four subjects because you're seeing here. What it means is that you're covering a lot more topics than the four suggests. Now, how can this fit into my busy lifestyle? Well, if you look at our timetable, you'll see that typically you can attend just one day of class for the week. There are three different intake periods. There's one in February, there's one in June, and there's one in October. So you could qualify for any of these intake period. Our next intake period naturally is in June. So right now we are recruiting for the June intake. But if you miss that, the next intake is in October, right? So there are three intakes each year. So by the time, if you miss one, you, there's, the other one is just a few months away. Now, in terms of each class, for each class, typically there's a two hour session per week. Each class is a two hour session. Now, how many, so if you recall, how many subjects are you studying at one time? How many units are you studying at one time, guys? One or two? or three or four? It's four from level four. Yeah, four subjects, but are you doing all four at one time? Two, 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 two at a time, good. So you're doing two at a time and each subject has a two hour class. So if you're doing two subjects, that's four hours of classes, right? 
So you have four hours of classes. Now that four hours of classes is more than ample to cover the content for teaching. But that doesn't mean we do we do two hours of class for one subject and you stop there. Two. Bernice? Sorry, Bernice, would you mind repeating? I didn't quite hear you. You could type it in the chat if you prefer, right? But I'm not hearing you. All right? Okay, I'll move on, right? Because I'm not hearing. So based on this, you have each subject has two hours of teaching, but you also have to do your own self-revision. And ideally, if you use probably spend like eight hours per subject in addition to the two hour class. Of course, if you have an assignment, you, you'll spend a lot more time than that, right? When you have assignment, you'll spend more time than that to complete the assignment. Okay. So you roughly have four hours of classes per week per level, four hours of classes per level, except for bridging, where you only have one subject. So you only have a two-hour class for the week. Right. These subjects are assessed via assignments, right? But you also have different ways, right? Okay, thank you. They, these subjects are typically assessed by assignments, but there are different ways that the university assesses you, which we'll talk about as well. A semester typically runs for around, roughly 15 weeks or so, right? You'll have about roughly 12 to 13 teaching weeks, but the semester runs for 15 weeks typically. You'll have a two-week break within the semester as well. So just a note also. Good? All right, so this is an example of a timetable. So if you look at the timetable, you'll see in the BPS bridging program, we have one unit and it's eight to 10 on a Saturday, All right? We have fundamentals of computer studies and intro to software development. You have a two hour class here and another two hour class here. And these are eight to 10, 10 to 10 to 10 to 12 to 10, right? So these are the class times. So roughly four hours of classes for level four, four hours of classes for level five also on a Saturday and you have now level six, the only thing is you're seeing like three, well, four different parts. The, if you're doing the final project, what I've done for the final project students who are doing their thesis, we have one class that teaches you programming to help you to build the application and another class to focus on the technical report. So we have two classes, we split it out and that's purely to support and assist the students, right? So, but you're only doing two subjects, please note in a semester, right? But because new students will be doing research methodology, and the continuing students will do the, uh, the undergraduate project, right? So the project is made up of two parts. The first part is research methodologies where you propose the project and the second part is the undergraduate project where you actually build the application and submit your technical report. Now, in terms of assessment now, the university will assess you in a myriad of ways. So let's take a look at some of the typical ways you're going to be assessed. So you may have a coursework, which is an assignment and the assignment might be due in a roughly four, four weeks ahead, right? So you'll given often four weeks to, to roughly seven weeks to, uh, ahead of um, not, notice on what the assignment is. You may have individual assignment and you may have, a, in odd cases, you may have a couple group assignment as well, right? You may have to build a portfolio where you do a series of small things and basically building a portfolio as well. You may have to do an essay, you may have to do a presentation of slides, etc., right? Or recording, you may have to do an an exam or test in some instances, right? So whichever it is they use, they use from these pool of different ways of to assess you. So you assess in a variety of ways. Normally for most subjects, you have a two hour class. So I'm a two, sorry, you have two assessments. So each subject in most instances, there are two assessments. There are a few exceptions to the case though, right? But most subjects have two assessments, okay? So normally in level four, the assessments will focus on the fundamental concept of computer science. Right, but the same thing you're going to be taught, you're being assessed on as well, right? So that's ideally what you'll be focusing on. Now, in terms of passing and progressing as well. So first you do your two assignments or however many assignments and you get your individual results for these. What determines if you pass overall? Well, to determine if you pass overall, what, what has been applied right now is that if your total score is 40 or more, you pass the unit. So if you do the assessment and your total score is 40 or more, you pass the unit. If you get less than 40, right, it means you have failed, but it is not the end of anything. When you fail, you'll be given a referral assignment to do. You don't pay for the referral. You're simply given like a makeup chance to do an assignment. It might be the same assignment. It might be a new assignment. Once you complete that assignment and pass it, then you pass the unit. If, however, you fail the referral, like you didn't submit it or et cetera, then you have to pay to repeat the unit. Good. So we talked about that, right? Passing a unit is 40% or more overall, not individually, but overall. 
and you pass the unit and then if you fail a unit then you're given a referral and if you pass if you fail the referral then you have to repeat the unit and pay the pay the university to repeat the unit as well okay so that's the process with feeling right and i'm passing now in terms of graduating once you've completed the program you'll graduate you can get first class honors upper second lower second etc so those are the different classification you could get first class upper second lower second and third class honors good now to, in, in terms of the what determines first class etc if you started the program directly in level six if you started directly at level six then what will happen is that your best 90 credits each subject is 30 credits right so 90 credits is your best so your best three marks right i use but your project must is mandatory that it uses the undergraduate project so ideally you take your undergraduate project and the next two highest marks you get the average and if the average is 70 or more you get first class honors simple thing if you started from year one or year two your year one grades doesn't count towards your degree but your year two grades count so in that case, if you started from year one or year two, what they do is your year two grades, your best, your best three subjects in year two are worth 90%, I'm sorry, are worth um, one third, and then your final year grades are worth two thirds. So basically your final year grades is worth two thirds, and the year one rate is worth, year two rate, sorry about that, your year two subjects or your year two marks are worth one third of the whole result, and your year three marks are worth Two thirds of your overall result, and they they are now combined to get your overall class of degree, whether it's first class, upper second, lower second, as the case may be. Right now, early on, I had indicated that CTS College is more popular for our support. So, what kind of support? Right, no problem, Bernice. Right, um, what kind of support is available? So, let's start. So, in terms of our support. Many of you said, well, you would have called the office, you got information, you got emails, etc. So we have emails that generally provide a lot of information. We also have, before you make a decision to start, we even have this information session as well. Why the information session? Because it is so crucial that before you make a decision about your studies, that you're in the right frame of mind, and this is something you want to do. I'll tell you that sometimes we have students who, who, who start a degree, but they're not committed and you spend a lot of time, we spend a lot of time having to call the students, they, they, they don't answer, you have to call, follow up, call parents, etc. No, I have no problem doing that because as just the same way as a doctor will swear an oath towards their patient, this is how I view education and our role is to ensure you get the best support as possible. So often with the younger students enrolled in the program, we have to often indulge parents because the students may, may see so have instances where students may, may not submit an assignment on time, etc., because they just don't understand the importance and severity of these things as well, right? Um, but what we do is we try to constantly monitor and we try to set earlier deadlines. And if anyone didn't meet the early deadline, we start calling them, calling their parents to avoid that the, the, the other, the ultimate deadline, because if you miss the ultimate deadline, you'll get zero mark for your assignment. And that is what we're trying to avoid. Now, so we do information session. We actually spend a lot of time doing tutorials as well. So when you start classes, I told you you'll have a two hour class, but apart from that two hour class, if you have an assignment or exam or something coming up, we do additional classes now to prepare you for those. We do tutorials and stuff to guide you, to help you as well, so that you are well informed in terms of before you, you put your answers. We don't give you the answer, we guide you in terms of the learning so that you are best prepared now to undertake the exams, right? Um, so we do tutorials, which are addition to the normal classes as well, right? So these are some of the things, our classes are recorded, the recordings are available online. You could watch them any number of times you want. If you miss class, you could watch it. If you were in class and you just want to get a refresher, you can review it, etc. All the resources are online, which makes it easy for you to support as well and to get access to stuff. Apart from that too, if you need letters and all of those, we act like a concierge service. So each program at CTS has a program manager and the role of the program manager basically is to handle every single thing you need. So you need a letter, lazy with your program manager. You need to get this done or that done, lazy with your program manager. You are not understanding something, lazy with your program manager who will try to get you the support as best as possible, right? So those are some of the things that, those are some of the things that we are doing, right? Okay, so given that's the case now, so that's a bit about support. Let's talk more about the other support that is available. 
So we have support from CTS and we have support at the university. So we have our staff who are working at the office. So we have face-to-face -face support and we have online support, right? In terms of each course, we have course advisors. We have program managers as well who will assist you with your application. So after the session, we will also guide you with your application. After you've completed the application, we will you send it to us. We will we will review if there are any problems. We let you know like look, it's missing this. I need to get that as well. Then we submit it to the university. We advise you of the updates in terms of when you get accepted as well. We help you in fulfilling all the forms as well. If you need, we submit it to the university also. We provide guidance throughout the entire journey. So these are these are more administrative function in terms of the classes. You have lecturers as well who are teaching you. But apart from that, we also have tutorials that provide additional support when you have assignments and stuff like that. We do, even before you start, we conduct induction session to make sure you know about Harvard referencing, to make sure you know how to use the university resources, how to research stuff as well, right? How to write it and how to paraphrase and all of these different things that we will teach you as well. So those are covered in our induction session and our support as well. Apart from that, all the materials, we have available in an online share drive. Our online share drive has material from last semester. It has sample assignments from previous semester with their permission, of course, that is available. So you can see samples of what students have done in the past, right? We also provide the online drive has access to, so you have like um, past assignments from students. You have all your lecture notes, all the recordings and stuff like that are available there. Even in some cases, we have like books and stuff like that that may be available on those share drive. So you have lots of access to information. So the availability of information is not the issue. Simply you making yourself available now to use the information, right? So we also conduct an induction session where we guide you in terms of Harvard referencing, right? We also look at study tips and skills as well, academic. We conduct academic writing workshop as well to prepare you before you start the degree, right? Apart from that, our lecturers are what we call industry leading lecturers. So we get lecturers who are practitioners who practice what, what they teach. So therefore you have programmers and stuff who are teaching you programming, that sort of thing, or database administrators who are teaching about database or network administrators who are teaching about networking, right? So apart from that too, there's a student voice where you have a voice and you get to, you get to share your feedback both with CTS and with the university as well, right? So what do you need for this now the course is is fully online right now right so you'll have access to, to the course from anywhere in the world now what would you need you need access to a laptop you can access classes via phone and all of that but truly speaking i would encourage you to have access to a laptop or desktop or some device because when you have to do your assignment you'll find that the phone and all of those may be a little problematic to use although i've had students who did the entire assignment over on a phone but really you know, you may find that, you know, if you have like a, a laptop, it will be more suitable as well. And you will need to have Wi-Fi for classes, etc. Now about graduation, where can you graduate? The good thing is you can graduate two places. You can graduate in the UK and you can graduate in Trinidad. Of course, if you're going to the UK to graduate, you'll have to cover your own expenses for airfare and accommodation, right? But you get the opportunity to graduate with the university students. You are a university students, so you can graduate in the UK, right? And they have a wonderful location as well. The only thing is because of the, the um, COVID graduation have taken a whole different turn as well, right? Next, how do I qualify? Now, the qualification is really the entry requirements. Now, remember we, we spoke about the entry requirements earlier. So because we spoke about the entry requirements, I won't go in detail, but ideally the bridging program has no entry requirements so anyone can start there. But the truth is, is that most of you can start from level four. For level four, you need any work experience. Once you have any work experience, you can start at level four, right, in the program. If you have IT work experience or, or I, I, IT qualification, then you can start at level five or level six. So what we do, note when you are submitting your application to us. When you are submitting your application, if you can please include your resume. The reason for including your resume is because it should have all the courses you did. Now, some students may not want to tell us, look, I started my degree here, but I didn't finish it. You please in, include those things. The reason is like, because you, you may have started your degree elsewhere, but you didn't finish it. The, you would have done courses in there that may, be, that may be applicable. And because you would have done IT courses, you will get exemptions within the program. So if, for example, let's say you did a year at UE, or you finished year one, and you didn't succeed through the other years, or for whatever reason you stopped, that year one courses, if you, 
could help you now to get into year two in the degree. So rather than ignore the fact that you didn't finish the degree, right? And you, you avoid that, it's not a problem. You can include that because it's, once it's in IT or computing or any, any related area, please let us know because those things can help you to get exempted from the lower level to move to a higher level, all right? So what can you submit when you're applying? You submit the application form. So after I'll email you the application form, likely you would have already gotten the application form from an earlier email from us. Two, include a copy of your CV and either your passport or your ID. It must not be expired, right? So make sure what you're sending is not expired. Now, please note, if you are married and the, the, your, your name on the ID is different from the, your, your current name, so in the application form, you'll have a name, right? And let's say you've changed your name, but your ID has your old name, please include your marriage certificate. For those of you who, where there's a change of name and the ID doesn't have the new name, then please ensure that you provide any evidence to support the new name, good? All right, apart from that, if, you can, if you've already completed your program, if you have any evidence of completion, whether it is a certificate or a transcript or letter of completion, those things will be beneficial for us as well. If you were incomplete, like let's say you, you did a program at UE and you stopped after year two or whatever, kindly get us a copy of your transcript. A student transcript is fine. It doesn't have to be an official transcript, but all of those will be helpful in using with your application, okay? If you did any IT certification courses, please include those as well because those are helpful. If you have the certificate, you can include those. If not, you can at least list the courses, IT courses you did, even if you don't have all the certificates. Now, this is the process between applying, right? The first thing you do, you submit, you submit a signed completed application form. We will review it. If it's not complete, we'll let you know. If it's complete, we'll inform you that it is complete and it's being sent to the university for processing. Normally, it may take a couple of weeks at the university. Sometimes it may take as much as three weeks. Sometimes it could be less. They would now review your application and they will issue us a letter of offer. They send that to CTS. What we do now, we, have to, we will forward that letter of offer to you, advising you that you've been accepted by the university. However, you need to sign off your letter of offer and fill out your registration form. You complete those forms now. You send it to CTS College. And once you send it to CTS College, what we will do now we, the next thing is, well, we've gotten those, but we're not gonna send it straight to the university because what we had learned from the past, when we send your completed forms to the university, they would register you. And then after some students don't recognize by filling out those forms, you are committing to starting. So the university registers the student, but the student decide, hey, I'm not gonna start now, and but you're already being built on the university side. So what we decided to do now, we just change our process because students were simply, signing the forms, but they leaving it. So what we do, we're not sending it to the university until you come and you make a payment. So once you come in and register with CTS and make a payment, then after we will submit your documents, it's a confirmation that you are starting and we will now send your stuff to the university, right? And then afterwards, after university will create your account on Brio and then you, you will also have induction. Your induction is on the 19th of June and classes start on the 26th of June and you will be added to Brio as well. So you have access to, to, to um, the university resources online, and then we will provide all the links for classes and all of those things as well, right? So this is an idea of the step-by-step -step of what to expect once you decide to start, right? So this is where we are. So ideally for, for most of you, you haven't started step one as yet. And this is before you start step one, we normally encourage you to be at the, in, the information session, learn about the program and then decide. Now, what about costing? How much will this program cost? So in terms of costing, now let's take a look. The, this is the costing for the full level. So for, if you're in the bridging program, it's $500 to register. There's one unit, two, tuition is $2,000, and the university fees is 150 pounds. If, however, you're in year four, with, sorry, level four, which is year one, there are four subjects. Now I'm looking at the total cost for the entire level, right? So you'll pay 500 per semester to register. You'll pay 2,000 per subject, and there are four subjects. So your total tuition is 8,000. And the university fees is 150 per subject by four, which is 600 pounds. So if we work out the total cost for year one, right? That the full cost for year one is roughly registration. It's two semesters. So that's a thousand for registration in total, 8,000 for tuition. So that's 9,000 there plus 600 pounds. Now the pounds are paid in pounds or with either bank draft or so, right? But in total, that works out to roughly 15,000 or so. So year one, level four, which is year one, is about 15,000 in total. You're not paying that upfront, eh? You could if you want to. 
but we have payment plans available. Level five, which is year two, is roughly 16,000 in total. And year three is about 25,000 in total. So based on that, now we have payment plans. So you could pay up per semester. So if you're paying per semester, this is what it looks like. For, for, um, for level four, you're doing two subjects. So it will be 500 to register, 4,000 for tuition because 2,000 by two is 4,000 and 300 pounds to the university. For level five, you're paying 500 to register, 4,500 for tuition, right? And then you're paying 300 pounds to the university. Level six is 500 to register, 5,000 in tuition and 750 pounds. Now, we also have a more flexible plan called the monthly plan. For the monthly plan, this is what it looks like. You pay 500 to register. You're paying five, if you're doing level bridging, you're paying 500 per month for tuition. And you pay 150 for the university fees. If you're in level four, you pay 500 per month per subject. So if you're doing two subjects, right, it will be $1,000 per month for four months, right? And if you're doing level five, it's the tuition fee, you simply divide the tuition fee by four. So it's the semester tuition fee divided by four. So if you're doing level five, it's 500 to register. Go right ahead. Question, anyone? All right. So in terms of monthly, right, just to go over. And if you'd like me to just let you know as well, right? I just like to remember how much was for the IT, IA. It was like 10,015 and then it's like 950. Right. Them have it as hello. Um, eight thousand for the first year, right? Eight thousand for the first year. Um we're doing it per year or you're looking per semester. So let's go back, right? So and then but then hello? for the first year. You're now for just year, right? semester, semester, you could you could pay it part if you want. Yes. I, 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 I'm not sure if you're speaking to me or are you just speaking to someone. Is there a question? Hello? All right. Okay. So in terms of the fees now, this is the per semester fee, right? And then we'll do a per month fee. The per semester fee, right, is for level four is five hundred dollars to register, four thousand dollars for tuition, and three hundred pounds to the university. Right, that's for level four per semester. But if you're paying monthly, all you do is if you're paying monthly, you take this fee here and you divide it by four. You divide it by four. You divide, so you take that fee there and you divide it by four. So if you're paying monthly, you take the semester tuition and you divide it by four. So 4,000 divided by four is really a thousand each month. So you're paying a thousand per month for four months. If you're doing this year, right, then you take this, you divide it by four. And if you divide this by four now, it's basically $1,125 per month for four months. And if you, if you take in level five, you take this and you divide it by four, it basically works out to 1,250 per month. You're paying monthly. So that's your monthly plan. So I'm showing you how we're moving. This is per semester. How are we moving from per semester to per month? So we're moving from semester to monthly, right? So when you're moving from semesterly to monthly, you divide the tuition by four, right? And that is how we came up with this here, right? And this is the university fees across here. Good. Any questions on this, guys? Would you like to ask any questions? Any questions? No question. Go right ahead. No, no, no. I said no question. Um, it's actually from from the information that you're giving us. It seems to be you're all kind of making it really um accessible and affordable for students to actually take part in the course. And so that's so that's a good thing in my on my side. My sincere apology. I just it came out a bit muffled, so I didn't hear you clearly. Would you mind just repeating to me, please, if it's all right? I'm sincere. All right. apologize. All right, sure. You all can hear me clearly. I'm hearing you now better. Sorry about that. All right, that's no problem. No, what I'm saying is that um, in terms of the the payment 
fans that I see y'all offering for the tuition, y'all um, um kind of, y'all are sort of making it really accessible or more accessible for um, for uh, students to take part in the course. So that's a a, a real positive in my end, on my book. Thank you so much as well. I'm really grateful for your comment as well. All right. Um, as much as we can, we try to meet students at the point of their needs as well. We understand the challenges also, right? And because of that, we had reached out to the bank and GMMB was very much willing to partner with us as well to help students also with even funding and financing as well. So, but grateful for the comment also. So you can pay per month or per semester. Now, please note, if you're not sure how to interpret it, I am willing to meet with you and guide you and, and work with you so you can understand what the payment plans are each month as well, right? Just in case if you're not very clear from these slides here, okay? All right. So apart from these now, we have a special offer available to you guys. So what is that special offer? Well, you can get up to a thousand, right? There are no additional fees, guys. The only thing is if you're graduating, right? So the question is, are there additional fees to graduate? So apart from this, this is for tuition, et cetera, but to graduate, the graduation ceremony may have a cost. So the cost might be $500 or so for the ticket, which will include meals and gongs and hood and all of those different things and portraits, et cetera, depending. So that's the only additional cost, but that's purely to graduate if you want to attend the graduation ceremony, because our, our graduation ceremony is normally a lot higher. So normally for the food, for the gongs and all of those, we charge, well, I think the last price we had was 600 for the ticket, but it includes the gongs, it includes the food at Hyatt, it includes photography and video as well, right? So all of those you are getting with it, okay? So that was part of what it covered. Now, in, in terms of this, we have a special offer available where all applicants can receive up to $1,000 per level. So you can get $1,000 off level 4, $1,000 off level 5, $1,000 off level 6, with or $250 off per unit. So if you're doing the bridging program, you'll get $250 off because it's just one unit. So how can you qualify for the special offer? How can you get 250 off each of your subject? If you, to get a special offer, this is simply what you have to do, right? So in your case, they, we have a special condition as well. You must submit your completed application form with your supporting documents by Friday, 26 March. That's roughly a week away from now, right? Just one day less than a week. So by Friday, 26 March, you submit all your documents to us, to study at ctscollege.com. Right, so you submit all your documents to study at ctscollege.com and then your registration, tuition and university fees must be paid in full by the 12th of June. So I've given you all the way until June to complete the payment of your fees. So once you complete payment of all the fees in full by the 12th of June, you qualify, you get 250 off per, per subject that you're doing, okay? So on each semester, you continue the same thing. Once you pay your fees upfront, we give you that 250 off each semester per subject. So, and that is how you, every semester you could qualify for the special offer, which gives you up to thousand dollars off per, per level, which is up to 3000 off in total. All right, so let's run it by again. You must submit your completed forms to the supporting documents by Friday, 26 March. And you must submit now your, your, your payment of fees is not required until June, right? But only after you pay, then we submit your stuff to the university. All right, so just to know those as well. So when can I start? Well, we mentioned earlier that induction is the 19th of June and classes start on the 26th of June. So that's our next start date. And that brings us really to our Q&A session now and at the end of today's session. Would you guys like to share any comments, questions or so you may have? I'm more than happy to, to answer your questions. And just a reminder as well, guys, if each of you would, wouldn't um, kindly WhatsApp, I'm sorry, kindly post your email address and your name to ensure that I send you the slides because I'm sending a recording of the session right after. So I'm sending a recording of the session to you, but I need to get your slides. Um, I need to get your email address, sorry, to send it to you all. So to get the slides and the recording, I need to get your email address. So if you could kindly include your email address, please, if you could private message me and I'll do that as well. All right, and I'll send that for you all. For you all. Also, there's a survey that I want you all to take part in, and I'm putting the link for the survey on the on the drive. This is the link for the survey. If you could complete that for me as well. Now, to answer your question, would CompTIA course that you've completed be considered? Yes, that's the any course you've done, even though you didn't do the international certification, but you did. Let's say did the course at CTS, SBCS, or any of those schools. You can provide the certificate from the school 
and that will be valid as well. So if you can, so, so you should include that in your application. Any of those IT certification courses would be valid as entry for level four. You could even use it for level five if you also have IT work experience as well, All right? So in terms of a good laptop brand for class, now, honestly, most brands would be fine. You know, any any brand would be suitable. We don't have a specific brand, but ideally, what I in terms of the specs, just for a second. In terms of the specs for the program, right? What I would recommend as well is that I um maybe I would recommend eight eight um two hundred and fifty gigs of hard drive minimum. But you have online storage now, so I think and eight gigs of RAM, right? So that's highly recommended, right? And you could use any brand. So we're not really recommending a particular brand. I like, um, I know some people who are very much into the the um, the the series from Apple and their iPads and stuff like that. And however, we, we have persons who have Microsoft computers, but in terms of those, they are more high end and costly. You can also go with a, a cheaper computer that you could get a price now to one of those. Right, but I'd recommend generally eight gigs of RAM and a 250 um, gigs hard drive space. Okay, all right. Is just other question is the special only available? Sorry about that. Let me just get to see all the questions as well. Is the special only available for June intake? This special is currently available for the June intake. For the October intake, we may have another special available back then. It may not change much though, right? But ideally this is for the June intake. But if you're starting later on, we may have another special for the other intake later on, right? Um, right, cool, no problem. Thanks a lot, Kevin, and for Nicole Thomas joining as well. Good, all right. I think I've answered the question there. If there's anyone who haven't answered the question, right, um, please feel free to ask them as well. So you could use the, the you could use the um, the chat or you could use the speaker as well to ask your questions. Okay. Thank you guys. Please ensure you post your message, your email address, please, so I can ensure I send this stuff. So kindly post your email addresses, please. Right. Okay. Hi, um, um, so, <clears throat> sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, I know you mentioned that, um, like the you have the different entry requirements. So let me say, someone wants to wants to start at level five. Right. Um, they will like they will need to have. Just correct me if I'm wrong. Is direct IT work experience as well as any IT skills they would have done before. Mm -hmm. Yes. So. All right. Um, go ahead. Uh, no, you, you go ahead. My apologies. You go right ahead and finish off. All right. So, it, so in terms of like direct IT work experience, like is there a, a, a minimum? All right. So the recommended by the university for starting, like if you want to start at level four, right? If you have two years IT work experience, that will be very helpful to start at level four. If you want to start at level five, you could use the two years, but you also need to have IT suits. But however, if you have like three, three years IT experience or four years IT experience, I've seen instances in the past where the university considered it as um, for level five entry. And if you have like six or more years, they've covered it, considered it level six. Now I want you to note, while precedents have been set in the past, it has not always been fully consistent. So I might have seen in one year, in one intake, a person with six years IT experience and suits get into to level six. In another instance, the same person, a similar person with similar credentials was accepted to start at level five instead. So it's not a guarantee, but the fact is, is that when you apply in the application form, you need to include the level that you're applying for. What, okay. what, I, what I want to do with you, with you guys as well, I want to just go through quickly the filling out of the application form. It's not a very difficult process, but I'll just run through with you all as well. There are a couple more questions. In terms of how can we send you our your email address, you could type it in the chat, but you could just send it to me alone if you wish, which is private message me, or you could type it in type it in in the chat there. So that's how you get you put your email address, right? Um, sorry, Mrs. Start, are there any diploma certificates awarded at the levels? Okay, so in terms of the intermediate level, one of the things that we had done when we started the pro before we started the program, we gave the university what we call our wish list, and. In terms of the wish list, we, we gave several different things we wanted, and these are changes from the original structure of the program, right? And one of the items in our wish list was the fact that at the end of each level, students will be able to get an, a certificate or diploma. 
the university advised us that those are things they will work on. However, the easiest thing to do to get approval for the program was to get it approved in its natural state and then they will apply for the changes as they go along. Because once we start getting numbers, because what we're requesting is a change from their policy. So, so far we've gotten the other items in the wish list done, but that is the outstanding item. And that is something they would look at probably next year as the number of graduates increase, right? Um, they will consider it. So for now, no, you're not, you're not getting um, diplomas at the end of each level, but you'll get at the end of the course, however, right? So just to note the question from Neil as well, okay? So for students interested in the bridging program, can this be started without CSEC? Yes. So if you have someone writing CSEC in June, you can still start the bridging program without your CSEC results. We, we've had several students who've applied for the bridging program without CSEC results as well, and they've, they, they've been accepted at the bridging level. So yes, you can, even without CSEC qualification, you can start. So even if the person hasn't written CSEC as yet, they can start the bridging program. Good. So hope that answers the question. So please include your email address. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to show you how to fill out the how to fill out the application form, right? So just give me a second. I'm going to just pull up the application form for you guys and, and share it and just quickly run through how to complete the application form. So just need a, a minute to get the application form as well. All right, one more question before you um, go on to that. Sure. Right, um, so, so if, so is it possible, all right, so you said in the application process, you you stated um, what level it is you, wanna, you, you wish to start at. Yes. Um, if for, for whatever reason you're unable to qualify for that level, would the application then be applied to the lower level or do you have to resubmit again? No, you don't need to resubmit. What the university does, they will assess your application and determine which is the best level. And then they will then give us, um, they will detail. So when we get your offer letter, even though you applied for level six, you may get an offer letter telling you level five, right? So, okay. So you don't need to reapply. They will you indicate what level you'd like to start at, and they will indicate what their offer letter will tell you which level they're accepting you to start at. Right? All right, cool. Excuse me, right. I have a question. Go right ahead, yeah. Yes, yeah, so well, you see now, what what if someone never took um the IT course back in CSEC, but over the years now, they well they just repair com there's repair computers and stuff here like like a neighborhood now. Understand. Um, will you still be a, you can still be applied well level for the bridge song and then and keep going up to level four, then level five, and then level six. All right. So here's how it works. You don't need CXC IT, right? First of all. So when I talk about CXC passes, you don't it doesn't matter what subject, right? So even if you don't have CXC passes, you can start the bridging. Now let's say if you've been repairing computers, so you have practical work experience, right? Now, naturally, for persons using work experience, you may be required to get a job letter from the employer stating this, right? You, we don't need to know salary and stuff like that. The job letter is simply to confirm that you've been fulfilling, like you've been working in the IT department or, or these are the, the tasks you've been doing to show not that well, it's so it's private. Right. I think right. I, was, I was doing it private, so not... Gotcha. Not I understand. So I'm now that, So if, you, if it is you are doing work privately, if you have like a letterhead or something like that, then you could write it on a letterhead if not, then what you do, there's something called a personal statement. You could complete a personal statement indicating that, look, you have had your private business where you've been repairing computers for X number of years, et cetera. So these are some of the skills you have. And you could use that to gain entry into, into maybe the lower level, like maybe level four, depending, right? If, if it is that you have no other qualification, then maybe I would encourage you level four. Now, one of the advantage of starting at level four, guys, is that you're learning Java and you're learning Python programming. And Python is really what is considered now as one of the more formidable languages. And when you look at like jobs to have and stuff like that, World Economic Forum will typically post like, you know, like jobs in IT, jobs generally. And one of the trending jobs is Python programmers as well. Huh? So, you know, you, and the good thing is with, because of everything is moving online now, you could be a programmer, you could be living in one country and programming and employed for a country, uh, uh, a company in another country because you, you get your skills is what they're hiring you for, right? So just a note as well. So there's value to starting at level one, um, year one, which is um, level four, because of the languages you're going to learn. All right, so I'm going to guide you a bit in filling out the form. Can you guys see the application form here? Is it the application form is on the screen? Can you guys see yeah, it? Yeah, I can see it, yeah. Yes, yes. Oh, I can see it. 
Oh. It's kind of small. But yes. yeah. Okay. Can you um okay based on your screen, if you're on a phone, it will look small, right? Uh, okay. So in terms of the form now, just if I try I'm to match right? anything. What you may have to do, Astira, you may have to use the Alt and Tab. If you hold on the Alt using a computer, if you hold the Alt and you press Tab, you'll eventually get it. What happened is being blocked by another window, right? It's it's being blocked by another window. So what you may have to do as well, you may just have to just use the Alt and Tab, and you'll you'll be able to switch between the um the application, so you'll be able to see the screen. Let me know if so you get. I'm, no, I'm on my um tablet because my computer don't have Zoom, so I use the tablet. No. Right. Okay. So on your tablet, is there any way you slide? If you slide the screen to the left or the right, could you slide to the left or right? See if you see it. If you slide the screen to the left or to the right. Yes, I'm seeing it now. Yeah. Right, gotcha. All right. So first of all, the signature. Now, if you're unable to, you, I don't need you to print this form and fill it out. That's not necessary. No one else. You can fill it out directly here. But here's what I do for the signature. If you are unable, you could just do a picture of your signature and paste it in here. But if you're not able to, you once you send us a, a picture of your signature or with your ID, your signature is on your ID, I could pull it from there and put it in here for you to help you out, right? So the whole thing is to make it simpler for you guys to do. So you don't have to print on all of that to send this to me, right? Okay. So based on that, what, you, what you'll do... Um, you could print, do a picture of your signature and paste it here. Or if you send me a picture of your signature, I could insert it here. Alternatively, if you send your IDs, your driver's permit, your driver's permit, your national ID or passport with your signature, I could insert it as well. Okay. Now you choose here male or female, right? Accordingly. Then you put your date of birth. Now a recommendation for date of birth is you put like you put it in, you spell out the month like M-A-R instead, because sometimes it's students, you're not sure because they mix up the order and then when their data birth is incorrect, when they get their certificate, they realize, oh, my data birth is wrong because they, when they had filled out the form, they put the wrong order, right? So even though it tells you day, then month, then year, I'll, I'll encourage you to fill it in this format so it's very re easily recognizable. You put your name here, you put your last name here, your previous name is if you, you were married before, this is your maiden name, goes in this column here. So that's your maiden name goes there if you are married or change your name, right? Don't worry about the passport number. Country of issue is not necessary. You don't have to worry about that. For the address, you could put in your full address here. All right. You don't need, if your correspondence address and your home address are the same, then you don't need to fill out the, the other side. You could just leave everything on the correspondence address, right? If you have a home phone, you could put the home phone here. Right. If you have a mobile phone, you put it here as well. So this is your mobile phone phone number here. Right. It doesn't matter if you leave out the 868 or you put it in. Right. Once you have your seven digit code, I, at least that's important. Please ensure that you put your email address. Right. So I'll put, for example, this is my email address. So you put your email address. Now, please verify your email address here because often people leave out letters and stuff. And if you put a wrong email address, this is the email address we are going to store on file for you. We, this is the email address we will use to communicate with you. So <clears throat> I'll kindly ask you to verify your email address. It's the most critical field that and phone number, please. Right? Because without those, we can't communicate with you if they're not correct. Now over here, you put in the country of birth, such as Trinidad, right? The present nationality. Trinidadian. Of course, if you want to put Trinidad and Tobagoian, all of that is fine. Trinidad and Tobago, your choice. Country of domicile is where you are living, right? So you can fill out those for these. Are you resident? You can all of these if yours. You can put no, no, no for these. You can put no, no, no for those there if you wish. So note as follows. For most of these, I just put no, 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 no for all of them, right? This part is will be filled out in the form that I'm sending you. Now here is where you put in now. So you have BSC IT here, right? This is already in the form. It's undergraduate. This is not a postgraduate program, it's undergraduate. And here you could put, if you want to start at the bridging, year one, year two, or year three. So here is where you specify whether you want to do the bridging, year one, year two, or year three. And here is when you want to start, which is the next intake, which is June, 2021. So you put the next intake there. Now over here, now you put your, this is an, the, one of the most important section because this is where what you put here determines if they accept you or not. Now, if you did 
CXE subjects, etc. Please don't put each one in a separate line. You could put one line, you could put secondary level, for example, 2010 to 2015, and I finished in 2015. So this is start year. You don't have to put the month in here, you could just put the year like 2010, 2015. You finished in 2015. The awarding body is not just secondary school, it's CXE is the awarding body. And you could put like six CXE passes or something like that, right? If you did A-levels, you have a line for A-levels, right? 2015 to 2017, CXE, and 5K passes as the case may be, if you did, right? I'm just using different things in case these apply to you. If you did like, if you did a batch, an associate degree from Costat, let's see. So it's IT, it's 2017 to 2019, right? You, it's not awarded as yet. Let's say you didn't finish the program, then you leave this blank. Costat is the school you were going to. It's an associate degree in operation systems management and I put incomplete because you didn't finish it. Or if it was complete and you could put, it was finished in 2019 here and you leave out the incomplete from there. Good, okay. Now, another thing to note, if you have certification, let's say that a, a plus certification, then the category might be computer repairs. In 2018, you did it. You finished in 2018, you did it at CTS and it's an A plus certification. Any question you'd like me to show you an example of how you could enter it? So I'm showing you an example of how to enter certification. I've shown you an example how to enter tertiary qualification, like an associate degree, etc. How to do O level or CXC passes for O level and A level. So those are examples of illustrating for the different things. Would you need any additional help? If you have multiple certification in IT, please include them. What I would always encourage you to do, put your highest IT qualifications there first, if you want, if, especially if you have a lot, right? If you have a lot, but if you don't have a lot, uh, if you don't have much and these lines are more than sufficient, then, then simply you can list it secondary to A level. So it's almost like a timeline of your qualifications. Okay, any questions here? And for each one, you'll put English here. So, excuse, um, so for example, if you have like, Contia Network Plus, right. like how A plus is under computer repairs. What um, it, you can program... choose any category. There's no fixed category, so I could put networking then, or I could put IT. So I could have chosen networking, or I could put IT. Anything or computing, anything you want, computer related or networking, etc. And then you fill in the rest of the information, right? So you put the start here, the end here. You put where you did it, and you put Net Plus certification, etc. Is that reasonable? Yes, sir. thanks. Good. There's no fixed term for this, eh? you just choose something related. So, but as much as possible, you put IT, computing or networking, things like those. Other questions before we move on? All right, next. So after we've done these now, the next section here is, all right. So this one here, you could put none. If you didn't do GC, et cetera, you could choose none. And you could put, you put if you did CXC grade two in 2005, one thing to know though, because how the form is structured, once you type in here, it automatically publishes um, for, for the others. Don't worry about that. that. That's simply a flaw with the form itself, right? Okay, for work experience now, if you have work experience, you put the job title and the nature of work, you put the organization when you started and to present, if you're currently working there, you put present and you put full time. Now, please note, if you're using IT work experience, I will encourage you to put all your IT work experience here because you want to sell those things more. So you put all your IT experience here, good? All right, next. Um, you don't have to worry about personal statement. Personal statement is only if you don't have the, like you absolutely don't meet the actual requirement and, and it's not very obvious. So therefore the personal statement comes in handy now. To, to put in things that you felt that, you know, look, it's not clearly explained in there. So if you want to write it out now in the form of a, like a, a statement, it's fine. It's not a formal statement. You just simply indicate like a letter why it is that you want to do the program and tell me about your qualification or experience, et cetera, right? That you've done to show it for, for IT. Next, physical disabilities, you put yes or no. How did you hear about us, whether through CTS, whether or through university website or through exhibition search engine as the case may be, or if social media, you could put here as well, right? So you could put the different things here. Now for the references, just a note, I need two references, but they don't need to write anything. I don't need a, a, a letter from a referee. All I want you to do is two persons, their name, 
phone number is sufficient. Just name and phone number is sufficient. If you have the information for the rest, fine. If you don't, it's not a problem. But your name and phone number is, is most important or name and email. But the university hasn't been contacting them necessarily all the time, but just in case they do. Now, just a note, these references ideally should not be a mother or father or someone in your family or a child, etc. but someone independent but they don't have to write any letter or anything. You just need to include their name. So it could be a co-worker. It could be someone you respect. It could be a rev, your, the pastor at your church, et cetera. Your choice for those. Okay? All right. Any questions as we go along? All right. Okay. Next. Um, again, guys, we have on the link, right? So Kevin just posted on the link as well. If you could kindly fill out on the link how you heard about CTS, I would have posted it before a couple of times. So I'm encouraging you again to please use the link. You see Kevin posted the link there, if you can include that as well, right? So, so we look at those here. All right, Craig, I'll look at your stuff shortly as well to go through with you. Now, next, after you've done that, you can sign here. If you can't sign it, don't worry. Once you send your stuff, I will put in your signature there for you as well. And that's it for the application form, all right? So you're, you're sending your application form. You're sending a, a scan copy of either your passport or your national ID. If you're sending your ID, remember front and back for your national ID, right? Or your driver's permit, right? And apart from those, you send, if you have, if using work experience, then if, if you can use a job letter, that will be helpful. Your resume, please include everything in your resume as well. Submit your resume. And apart from that too, if you have any evidence of your qualification, if you could include those as well, please, right? So once you send it, I will filter, fil go through the stuff and then I will guide you as well. Now, is this program recognized in, the, in North America, US and Canada? So just to share with you, right? One of the advantage of this program is a lot of students are migrating to Canada. Right, and because of that, your program is accepted in in Canada, in in the in the U.S. as well. In fact, in North America and many other countries. So, a lot of students are migrating to Canada, and one of the key advantages is that this program is accepted here in Canada as an equivalent of the Canadian degree. So, that's one of the key benefits for the program as well. Okay, all right. Any other questions? No. If, if not, we will wrap up at this point as well. All right, guys, I'm going to be, please ensure that you include your email address. You just type it in the chat for me, please. So I'll make sure and email every one of you will get a copy of the slides, et cetera, after, okay? So thank you very much, guys. I look forward to seeing you. Don't forget to follow the link that Kevin has posted as well, All right? And Mr. Biari, if you don't mind just staying back, so I'll just have a quick discussion with you as well, if that's all right. Uh, is it possible that I could actually have a discussion with you also? Oh, definitely. Anyone, you can stay back as well to have a discussion as well. In terms of payment, the payment could be made online via like banking. So if you could use online banking to make the TT payment. Now to make the payment of the pounds, you can get a bank draft and deposit it into our pound account at First Citizens. So you, you, you could get a bank draft from your bank, go to our First Citizens, which is our bank, and deposit it with our account number and send us evidence that it was deposited, or you can actually come into the office. The office is open Monday to Friday from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. and on Saturdays, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. So you could come in and do the payment at the office as well. At the office, we accept like cash, we accept links, we accept credit card, etc. Or you could do online banking, or you could simply go to any First Citizens Bank, which might be closer to you and also make the payment to our accounts. The account information will be provided as well, okay? Now, um, in, if you're applying for next year in 2022, it wouldn't make sense submitting your application now, right? So I would recommend if you're not looking at starting until 2022 or even later this year, you're not, if you're not applying for June, then maybe submit your application later on if you'd like. That might be the preferred thing, right? Um, the other one, just in case as well. So if, for example, you have A plus certificate, net plus certificate, right? and you did a, a program in agribusiness, which is not IT, right? But you also did um, CCNA, et cetera. Then, and you have over 12 years IT experience, then likely you start at level six. So if you have 12 years IT experience and a few certificates, level six would be the ideal starting point for you. All right, any other person with their questions? So any other person with their questions?
please feel free to ask other persons as well with their questions. Astira, are you by chance related to Astra? Because we have an Astra Hamilton Melville and a Melissa Hamilton. I'm not sure if you are in the same family of persons as well. Okay. Yes, I, I am Astria. Oh, oh, it's Astria. I always thought it was Astra. <laughs> All right, cool. No problem. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Thank you. Gotcha. All um, right. Thanks. Nice meeting you again. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyone else? Anyone else with a question? Somebody said they had a question. You want to ask the question? If not, guys, let me give you my number. My number is also on the. Let me put my number on the on the screen as well, so you can get my number. Right. Can you see the slide with my phone number here? Are you seeing the slide with my phone number? Okay. Seven 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 one two nine four. Can you see the slide with my phone number on it? Yeah, you can. Okay, good. No problem. So this is my phone seven, number here. If if you like seven 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 twelve nine four seven 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 twelve nine four. If you like, so I see. And twelve zero four, you know. Oh, it's twelve nine four. It's it's a nine, right? You know, it's a nine. Let me just um, sorry. Hopefully this will make it. A, Oh, sorry about that. Yes, Seeing it twelve nine four now. Does it look like a nine? <laughs> twelve nine four seven 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 twelve nine four. If you'd like, you could call me and we could talk. You could call me on WhatsApp or you can WhatsApp me a number and I'll call you as well and we can have a discussion also, right? So, well, guys, I'm ending the session here now. And we'll I'll post the recording as well for you guys. Um, I'll need a few hours to get it done though, because it takes a while for the video to convert and then to upload it to YouTube as well. And then I'll email out to everyone. Okay, so later this evening you'll have access to all of those. Okay. Thank you very much and have a wonderful weekend, guys. God bless. Take care.